A recent discovery has revealed that the outer planets of the TRAPPIST-1 system likely have significant amounts of water, potentially supporting conditions for life. This system, discovered in 2016, has captivated astronomers with its seven Earth-sized rocky planets orbiting a cool red dwarf star. This star system, located about 40 light years away, holds particular interest because several of its planets lie within the habitable zone, where conditions might allow for liquid water. These findings have significant implications for the search for extraterrestrial life and the study of planetary habitability. Recent research delves into the atmospheric conditions and water retention capabilities of these planets, providing deeper insights into their potential to support life. In this video, we will explore the discovery of the TRAPPIST-1 system, discuss the latest research on its planet's atmospheres, and examine the exciting prospects for future observations and the broader field of astrobiology. In the expansive universe, the TRAPPIST-1 system stands out as a particularly intriguing subject of study. Discovered in 2016, using the Transiting Planets and Planetesimals Small Telescope, TRAPPIST, in Chile, astronomers initially identified two rocky planets orbiting a cool red dwarf star named TRAPPIST-1. This discovery, marking the beginning of a series of revelations, was updated in 2017 with the identification of five additional planets bringing the total to seven Earth-sized planets within this compact system. Significantly, this system holds the potential for life as we know it, with several planets residing within the habitable zone where liquid water, essential for life, could exist. Therefore, these planets have become key targets in the ongoing search for extraterrestrial life. TRAPPIST-1 is an M dwarf star, a type of red dwarf that is the most common in the Milky Way galaxy. Their abundance makes them ideal targets in the hunt for exoplanets, but they also present unique challenges for habitability. One major issue is that red dwarfs emit powerful stellar flares, much more intense than those from our sun. These flares can strip away planetary atmospheres over time, leaving planets exposed to harsh cosmic and solar radiation. Another challenge is tidal locking. Red dwarfs emit less energy than stars like our sun, so their habitable zones are much closer. This proximity means that potentially habitable planets are likely tidally locked, with one side always facing the star and the other in constant darkness. This creates extreme temperature differences, with one hemisphere experiencing burning heat and the other freezing cold, complicating the potential for life due to harsh and unstable climates. The seven planets are designated TRAPPIST 1b through H, with varying distances from their parent star. TRAPPIST 1d, E, F, and G are particularly interesting because they lie within or near the habitable zone, where liquid water could exist. Red dwarfs like this system also have another peculiarity. They are much cooler and smaller than our sun. This means their habitable zones are much closer, and their planets are easier to detect and observe because the star's light does not overpower the planets. However, their prolonged pre-main sequence phase, when they are at their brightest, can expose planets to intense radiation for extended periods, which can erode atmospheres and drive away surface water. One significant focus has been on the potential for atmospheric escape, driven by the intense stellar radiation from the red dwarf star. This phenomenon can strip away the lighter elements of an atmosphere, such as hydrogen and helium, over billions of years leaving behind heavier elements like oxygen and nitrogen if they are present. While analyzing a planet's atmosphere is crucial to assessing its potential for life, it's not a straightforward process. Even the presence of oxygen, often seen as a promising biosignature, a sign of life, can be misleading. Non-biological processes on a planet could also create oxygen, leading scientists to identify a habitable world mistakenly. This complexity highlights the challenges in definitively identifying life beyond Earth. A study led by Megan Gialuca, published in the Asterisk Planetary Science Journal Asterisk, employs sophisticated simulations to explore the early atmospheric conditions of these exoplanets. This research is pivotal in determining whether these planets could retain their atmospheres and water over billions of years. 
The study's methodology involves simulating early atmospheres for each of the TRAPPIST-1 planets, focusing on various initial water amounts expressed in terrestrial oceans and different levels of stellar radiation over time. The research highlights a clear distinction between the inner and outer planets of the TRAPPIST-1 system. The inner planets, TRAPPIST, 1b, c, and d, are highly susceptible to water loss due to their close orbit around the star. Simulations suggest that these planets would have depleted their water reserves unless they started with an abundance of water. To be specific, initial water volumes would need to surpass 60, 50, and 30 times Earth's water capacity to maintain significant levels today. The star's intense ultraviolet radiation is likely to have eroded their atmospheres, leading to a dry and barren surface. Conversely, the outer planets, TRAPPIST, 1E, FG, and H, have a better chance of preserving their water. Models propose that these planets may hold onto a large fraction of their original water content, particularly if they began with volumes greater than Earth's water capacity. Planets E, F, and G, situated within the habitable zone, are especially compelling as potential hosts of surface liquid water. They could experience a maximum water loss of about 8, 4.8, and 3.4 times the water volume of Earth, respectively, throughout their existence. TRAPPIST-1H, the most remote, would likely be the least impacted, with a possible loss of just 0.8 times Earth's water volume. One of the critical aspects of this study is the consideration of oxygen retention. As atmospheres are stripped away, oxygen can be left behind, leading to high concentrations of abiotic oxygen. This can complicate the search for biosignatures, as oxygen is typically considered a strong indicator of biological activity. For instance, TRAPPIST-1c, despite its proximity to the star, could retain significant atmospheric oxygen, which could lead to false positives in the search for life. The study also shows how important it is to know the starting conditions of these planets, especially how much water they had at the beginning. If the TRAPPIST-1 planet started with a lot of water, they might still have plenty of it now, which means they could be good places for life. But if they began with only a little water, they are probably dry and not suitable for life today. These findings suggest that while the inner planets of the TRAPPIST-1 system are likely uninhabitable due to extreme atmospheric loss, the outer planets remain viable candidates for hosting life. This underscores the importance of focusing future observations on these outer planets to search for signs of water and potentially habitable conditions. Astrobiology is an interdisciplinary field that explores the origins, evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe. The study of the TRAPPIST-1 system is integral to this field, offering insights that could inform our understanding of life beyond Earth. Here's how. First, habitable environments. The TRAPPIST-1 system provides multiple planets within the habitable zone, where conditions might be right for liquid water. Studying these planets helps astrobiologists understand the range of environments where life could potentially exist. Second, biosignatures. Detecting biosignatures such as specific gases that indicate biological processes, is a key goal. The TRAPPIST-1 planets are prime targets for this search. For instance, the detection of oxygen or methane, especially in combination, could suggest biological activity, although these gases can also be produced through non-biological processes. Finally, comparative planetology. By comparing the TRAPPIST-1 planets to each other and to Earth, scientists can better understand the factors that contribute to habitability. This comparative approach helps refine the criteria used to assess the potential for life on other exoplanets. The Habitable Exoplanets catalog lists exoplanets that meet certain criteria, suggesting they could support life. Inclusion in the catalog is based on factors such as the planet's size, distance from its star, and potential for having liquid water. However, it is important to distinguish between potential habitability and confirmed habitability. Potential habitability means that a planet has characteristics that make it a good candidate for supporting life. For the TRAPPIST-1 planets, their Earth-like sizes and locations within the habitable zone suggest they could have liquid water and potentially suitable climates. 
Confirmed habitability requires more definitive evidence, such as the detection of water vapor, suitable surface temperatures, and the presence of a stable atmosphere. Ongoing and future observations aim to gather this evidence for the TRAPPIST-1 planets. In summary, the TRAPPIST-1 system represents a significant milestone in exoplanet research. Ongoing and future observations by next-generation telescopes will enhance our understanding of these intriguing planets, their atmospheres, and their potential to support life. The insights gained from this research will have profound implications for the field of astrobiology and the broader quest to discover life beyond Earth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this update on the TRAPPIST-1 system and want to learn more about the search for extraterrestrial life, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting space news. Stay curious and keep exploring the universe with us.